Good morning, Goma family. <clears throat> it's your friend and brother Derek Day, and I'm excited to be here. One thing I want to say before I get started is that if you haven't noticed, for the last three weeks or so, we've been doing service away from our church facility, and going forward, we will not be doing that anymore. Uh, we're moving from the four walls into nature. And there's a reason for this, but and, and I'll go into that at another time, but <laughs> we limit ourselves to putting our relationship with God into places when our relationship with God should be manifest in people. So I want to spend more time just intimately one-on-one -on -one with folks sharing this message. And understand this is online, so we're actually sharing it with many, many others. But I like to think that I'm actually having the opportunity to speak to you one-on-one. -on -one. And I hope that you too will hear some of this and possibly even go back and message me so that we can carry on these dialogues one-on-one. -on -one. So again, to the Global Online Ministry Alliance family, to my friend and brother, Kyle Butler, Lynn Bennett, my sister Catherine Toon, uh, Corey Nathaniel, Lionel Sneed, Michael Porter, Henry Harris, um, Mike Zinker. Man, I love you guys so much and all that you do to bring to the body of Christ. And right now, you're listening to The Dramatics, The Ocean of Thoughts and Dreams. And this song is so apropos to what we're going to talk about today because I love some of the things that that people have been sharing uh, through their messages and one of the things that I want everybody to see is that Jesus came to show us the correct view the correct revelation of the Father and through this revelation he showed us what is in us what we have the ability to do and I think that we wind up living epically beneath our purpose beneath our privilege because we simply dwell in the natural when we are created to dwell multi-dimensionally my mind just drifts away when I'm with you, Jesus. Riding through the ocean of thoughts and dreams. That I, I could just go on and on with that song. Listen, I, I'll tell you something. If you haven't heard this already, I hear the gospel in almost everything and even especially songs that are not quote unquote Christian because I believe that God put something in every musician, every singer, every, every lyricist, something that reveals him to the world, to creation. So <clears throat> I'm gonna start with uh, uh, John chapter 20. And, um, and I'm gonna paraphrase this, but it's um, uh, around John chapter 20, verse 17. And this is when Jesus emerges from the tomb and Mary finds him <clears throat> in the garden and she approaches him as if she, she's excited because she sees Jesus even though he had died. And she's anxious to hold him, to embrace him. But he says something really key here. He says, do not handle me, do not touch me, for I've not yet ascended to my father. And, and this is really powerful because Jesus had said earlier that no one has ascended to the Father but the Son of Man who came from the Father. At that time, that was the truth. But when Jesus came up out of the grave, see, here's the thing. When Jesus was on the cross and died, we died with him. When Jesus was placed into the tomb, we were placed into the tomb with him. And when he emerged from the tomb, we emerge with him. 
And when he ascended to the Father, we ascended <laughs> to the Father. And so at that point, there was, a, there was something that had to be accomplished by going to the Father. Now, let's take a step back and just kind of walk through the earthly ministry of Jesus. And, uh, and again, the first miracle that Jesus did, the first recorded miracle, was turning water into wine at a party where everybody was already drunk. I mean, this is what the scripture says, that when the partiers were well drunk, and it says, if you look at that in the Greek, it says intoxicated, inebriated, man, they were tore up. <laughs> and and so if, if, if it was all about sin, Jesus could have said, I'm not going to indulge your little sinful uh, peccadillo. I'm gonna stop this party. But instead, Jesus provided wine that was even better. And what he did, uh, and this was so powerful, is that the, that the pots that, he, that, that were filled with water that he turned into wine, these were the vessels of purification that the men washed from. They used this clean water to wash themselves to go into the temple. So here's the thing. Something that was, uh, that was intended for purification was converted into something for a party. Do you understand that God wants us to celebrate life? That God created us to party? God created us to enjoy life? Man, this is so powerful. But let me keep going. It's like feeding the multitudes. Jesus, he, he took the bread and the fish from the little boy. He blessed it and he broke it. And then he began to pass it out to his disciples who passed it out to people. Do you understand that the miracle of the feeding, the miraculous feeding, had nothing to do with Jesus. It had everything to do with the disciples. Do you catch that? If Jesus had simply broke the bread and passed it out, every time that, that someone else was going to be served, that Jesus would have to lather, rinse, and repeat, do this over and over again. But he blessed it and broke it, and then the disciples did what he did. They replicated what Jesus did and showed it to everybody else. Everybody saw this miracle not just happening from Jesus' hands, because you got to imagine, there were 5,000 men, and, and when you factor into um, multiple wives and multiple children, which was common at the time, you're talking about possibly 30,000 people. So by the time they got a, a sufficient distance away from Jesus, the people didn't see Jesus doing anything. They saw the disciples doing it. They saw the miraculous at the hands of other men. So watch this. Jesus was not only love and grace personified. He's not only liberty personified. He's not only the earthly manifestation of God, but Jesus is the earthly human expression of quantum physics. <coughs> Jesus took the power of creation and brought it down to earth level so that people could see the creative power of God in human form in such a way that they could grasp it, internalize it, understand it, and replicate it. You, my friend, my brother, my sister, are created to be a quantum being. You're not simply created to dwell here in this earth realm, in this three-dimensional space. We are created to be multidimensional. And I'm going to prove that to you today because, watch this, Jesus said, don't handle me because I'm not yet ascended to my father. But then Jesus shows up later in a locked room where his disciples were, and they weren't waiting for him. They were mourning. In, in the Jewish custom, they were sitting Shiva. And, and, and they were mourning, they were grieving over the loss of their friend, their brother, the, 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 the one they call Messiah, the one they call Rabbi, the one they call Christ. They're mourning because they, they think it's all over. They think that this is, when Jesus said it is finished, he thought that they were finished. Listen, Jesus shows up <clears throat> in this locked room. And, and the question is, how did he get into the locked room? Well, the easy answer is, well, Jesus is God, right? So he could just come on into the room. But it's more than that. See, Jesus did everything that he did, not as God, but as a man. He did it as a man so that he could show us what we are capable of, what God has placed inside us. 
So here Jesus comes into this room and then Thomas says, well, I don't believe it. Show me proof. And Jesus now says, touch my hands, touch my side. This will prove it to you. Do you see what happened between the garden when he came out of the tomb and when he came to the locked room? That he ascended to his father and he came back. Because he told Mary, don't touch me, don't handle me because I haven't ascended to my father. But then he tells Thomas, handle me, handle me. In other words, Jesus was taking us not just through his journey, but through our own. That he's showing us that we have ascended to the Father and we have returned to earth. This is really powerful because, you know, Kyle Butler had taught this, that our spirits have been with God from time immemorial. When God created man, he created them spirit, male and female created he them, and the image and likeness of God created he them. This is from the beginning. Now, what you've got to catch here is that if God created us to be with him from the beginning, do you think that 70, 80, 90, 100 years on this earth, which is just a blip on the radar of time or infinity, that he would judge us and separate us from his spirit, even though our spirit had been with him from the beginning, and now he's going to separate us eternally from him? That just doesn't make sense. That's one of those things that doesn't add up. It's like one plus one equals three. It just doesn't work, okay? So here Jesus is showing us that we have ascended to the Father and we have returned. And, and, that, and that he is the proof. He is the earnest deposit. You know, like when you buy a home, you put down earnest money that says that I'm committing to the deal. That Jesus was the, was the earnest money deposit on the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. He wasn't, the, he wasn't the, 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 uh, the consummation of the deal. He was just the initiation of it. <laughs> that's, that's so powerful. Jesus was, the, in, he was the, the inception of the deal, but not the consummation of it. The consummation of it is when the Holy Spirit came to dwell in each and every one of us. <clears throat> so, again, let's go back and look at some of the other miracles. So, like, the, the disciples are in the boat, and they're crossing over the sea, and there's a, a great storm that arose. And, and here, Jesus is, is asleep in the back of the boat, and the disciples, some of these guys were fishermen, and they knew what the sea was like. They had sailed it many times. They had fished on it many times, but here something was happening that was extraordinary. This was like the perfect storm, <laughs> and they, they were like, oh my God, we're going to die. Somebody go wake Jesus up quick. And what does Jesus do? Jesus gets up and he says, you know, how long I got to deal with you guys? How long, how much of this do you have to see? How much do you have to realize what is already in you? And he stands up on the bow of the ship. He says, peace be still. The storm not only ends, but it says immediately they were translated to the other side. <laughs> they were already there. In other words, you could look at this one of two ways. Either, either Jesus calmed the storm and teleported them to the other side, or they had all just about completed their journey, and when he calmed the storm, they were already there. And, and do you realize, too, you know, people say, oh, was well, you know, the devil that caused the storm and this, that. Yeah, okay, well, you know, you can believe that, or you can believe that this storm was just that horrible in their minds. They just simply believed that this was the worst storm that they had been in. But I digress. Um, Jesus goes to the Mount of Transfiguration. And here he goes up and Peter, James, and John are with him. And they see up on the mountaintop that there is Moses and Elijah with Jesus. The law and the prophets are standing side by side with grace. And so the, these disciples, Peter, James, and John, they're excited because they're thinking, oh my God, here it is. This is the culmination of everything that we've been taught. It's all here in one place. Let's build a tabernacle, a temple, a dwelling place for each one of them. And let's just dwell here because this is awesome. We got it all right here. We got the law. We got the prophets. We got grace. Oh my God, this is it. And then God speaks to them and he shines the light 
on Jesus such that his clothing appears whiter than white. And he says, this is my beloved son, hear him. In other words, everything that you heard about the law, everything that you heard about the prophets, stop hearing that because this is not associated with your quantum being. This is not associated with your quantum purpose. This is not what's going to get you translated. This is not what's going to get you ascended to me and return to earth. This is not anything that is concerning you or anything that's even important to you that Jesus is, that, that what he has brought, the revelation of the Father, the revelation of what's in us, the understanding that God is a quantum God, that he is the son of the quantum God and he is begetting sons of the quantum God. In other words, he's creating quantum family from quantum origin. In other words, it's like when God spoke, things happen. This is the big bang theory that the scientists uh, refer to. It's like God spoke and it happened. Bang, everything happened. So, so watch this. We are particles that came from that big bang and we have a, 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 physical um, and quantum purpose. We are here to help uh, promote and, and to create dimensional shifts in the world. We're not simply created to, to, to be here being human. We're spirits having a natural experience, not, not, not natural beings having a spiritual experience. See, that's the thing. Everybody goes to church on Sunday and they're hoping, I hope to get a move of God. I hope to have a spiritual experience. Holy Spirit rain down on me when they don't realize that the quantum mechanics of God in the Holy Spirit are dwelling in us right now. You know that, that things like x-rays, right, and MRIs, the, the radiation that, that pierces the body to take images of the inside, that there is quantum physics that goes on in that. There, there, there's atomic transformation that goes on that allows that to happen. But do you realize that the same power that emanates from a magnetron that it, that invades the body, that that same power is dwelling in you, that the same power that looks inward, that we have the same power to look from the inward to the outward. And not only that, just like how an x-ray, uh, it, it not only views the body, but you know that you take in a certain amount of radiation, so it changes the body. But this is the thing that when we, when we speak quantumly, we change the atmosphere. Do you realize, I mean, I don't know if any of y'all have ever experienced this or not, but I know I have. I'll walk into a room and, and people look around like, what just happened? What just happened? Oh my God, what just happened here? Did somebody change the thermostat? What kind of perfume is that? Oh, did, did somebody, is, is the air conditioning on? They, they, they say, man, something happened. And that's the way it should be. When you walk into a space, when you walk into a room, when you walk into an environment, you should change the atmosphere because the quantum power of the living God is dwelling in you. This quantum physics, it's like, you know, Jesus came to show us this quantum power that's living in us and to show us how to manifest it. Do you understand that all the miracles of Jesus were not to show the power of God? They were to show the power of us, to show each and every one of us what we are capable of doing, what we have the ability to do, that what we have the authority to do. Listen, you know, when, when Jesus uh, spoke in the, in the synagogue and he read from the scroll that was Isaiah 61, and, and when he left, they, people wanted to stone him. And Jesus just kind of disappeared. He was up at the, end of, at the edge of the cliff. They were about to stone him. And all of a sudden, he's gone. How is he gone? Because Jesus simply expressed the quantum power in him to translate himself from one, direct, from one place to another. It's just like when, when Peter, uh, I'm not, when Philip, rather, went to meet with the Ethiopian eunuch, it's like this Ethiopian eunuch is in a chariot traveling at high speed, and here, all of a sudden, Philip shows up. How does he show up? It's like he was praying and then and then he was translated. It was quantum physics. It was like, you know, uh, Kirk to transport a room, beam me over to the to the Ethiopian eunuch. 
It's quantum physics, y'all. And this is the thing that we're supposed to be doing. Do you understand that science has said that we only use a small portion of our brains. There's so much of our brain that's unused. God wants us to tap into that. He wants, to, he wants us to tap into the ocean of our thoughts and our dreams and, and, and express this through the power that he's given us. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That is so powerful. So that means that the same power that got Jesus up from the dead, the same power that got Jesus out of the tomb, the same power that got Jesus ascended to the Father, the same power that got Jesus into a locked room, the same power that got Jesus walking down uh, the Emmaus Road, the same power that's, that's, that calmed the storm, the same power that fed the multitudes, the same power that turned water into wine to keep a party going, is in you that is so freaking amazing and that's what we want to do listen you have to get in touch with your quantum self and and here's where the rubber meets the road because see people will say well all you need to know is in the bible no get some books on quantum physics get a book on quantum physics for dummies if you don't understand it in in, in a mechanical sense and i'm not calling anybody a dummy or anything but i mean you know quantum physics can be some heavy stuff or a, a book that i highly recommend is a book called awaken the sleeper by dr nick castellano you if you get this book you'll understand the dovetailing between quantum physics and spirituality but God wants us to understand this at a point that we are able to manifest it in the earth God wants us to show others his power because when we show him when we show the world his power through us what happens is is that the sleepers awaken because again there are no longer any sinners the the, the concept of sinners is dead that is dead as a doornail what <laughs> What it, what it is is that there are people who are awake, they are conscious of who they are in Christ, and there are people who are still asleep. Our job is to awaken the sleeper, and we do that through the understanding of a quantum God, a quantum Jesus, and a quantum me. That's what I have for you today. I pray that it blesses you, and if these videos bless you, <clears throat> please consider sharing them with others that they too might be blessed. And remember, as always, that God loves you. And so do I. You're loved and valued. Stay blessed.